they come every 30 seconds for four to six, sometimes eight hours. And I'm sure that's well up in the hundreds. I'm not a math person, but I'm sure it's, it's up there. I mean, if I had no self-control, no willpower, I don't know that I would ever leave the house. It would probably be me and however many toys I could get sent to the house <laughs> at any given time. <laughs> lots and lots of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Back in Los Angeles, Jeannie also dances to the persistent sexual arousal drum as her son Frank looks on. I have found that the more focus I give something, the less I'm aware of the arousal. So I try to keep myself moving and busy until I'm just like really exhausted and fall asleep. So I'll come in and I'll do a lot of cleaning. I'm real good at just moving around. I'll dust, I'll pick up lint, whatever, just to keep my body going. It's hard to sit still. I'm always moving. Maybe it just rearranges, you know, the pulsations or something. Plainly, none of these women have a vacancy for a cleaner. The support needs in their lives are more of the medical variety. But sadly, this is an area where the doctor's bedside manner seems to be lacking. I told my gynecologist. And he acted like I didn't say anything. He had a good snicker about it. And, you know, he got a big grin from ear to ear and said, you're every man's dream. And I'm not kidding. He, he was down, like, in the trenches, right? And he looked up at me. And then he went back to what he was doing. Like I had never said a word. Well, I reacted the way any woman would, and I said, you know, it's not funny. It's not a joke. Um, how would you like to walk around with an erection 24 hours a day or have an ejaculation and then within a few minutes have a full-on erection again and stay that way 24 hours a day, seven days a week? If the man that treats women and all he works in is that area of the body looked at me like that, Oh, then I definitely am the, the only one. There's, there's nobody else on the planet. You tend to think of Americans as sexually upfront in a Jerry Springer sort of way. But vast swathes of the country are Bible Belt areas, deeply conservative and repressed. Try explaining persistent sexual arousal there. This is exactly the problem Heather had to face. For this blushing young bride, the forbidden feelings started to develop three months after getting married, turning her world on its head. Nine years on, her husband and parents pray with her as a faith healer attempts to exorcise the demon monster. We want to make a difference in Heather's life, Lord. And that the name of Jesus is glorified. Yeah. Daughter is blessed, set free. So have mercy on us. Show us how to pray, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. How many people have you told? At first I told almost everyone because I was just so anxious to find out if anyone else was suffering from it and um, you know, if anyone knew of any kind of help. Some people thought that I was demon-possessed or that um, perhaps someone had cursed my womb, you know, saying things like, you know, if I wasn't a Christian and had this problem, that, you know, I would have ended up as a prostitute or a nymphomaniac. Despite her devout appearance, Heather's been a bit of a wild child in the past with several previous boyfriends, including the notorious singer Marilyn Manson. There's been a cruel suggestion that she's been cursed by her past. I don't know how I ended up with her. It's the strangest of gatherings, family members and Bible bashers discussing the unreasonable demands of Heather's private parts. I thought, boy, she's got to be sick of religious people by now. That was the first thought I had after reading this email. Is, boy, she's got to be sick of religious people. No wonder she's calling on weirdos like us. Yeah, there's so much misunderstanding. How, how you can't get any more humiliating than having to tell people that you have to masturbate for it to be relieved. It's, it's, yeah, so it's like it, it, you just laugh or you cry. 
For Heather, the feelings of persistent sexual arousal syndrome kicked in during her third month of pregnancy. It was in my third month of pregnancy that I just woke up one morning and there were these sensations, you know, within my vagina. And um, I, I thought perhaps it was just hormonal. So, um, you know, I, I masturbated and made it go away. But then the next day it came back. I talked to my, you know, obstetrician about it and she had no idea either, but she said that hopefully it would go away after the baby was born. For Rachel, persistent sexual arousal syndrome also came as an unwelcome extra when she had her first child. I was 21. I had just had a cesarean section for the birth of my son. Uh, it was a couple of weeks after he was born. And um, I just assumed that the feelings that I was starting to experience were a result of my hormones trying to, to find that medium ground again. And so I just kind of dismissed it. It was my first pregnancy. It was the first time I'd ever had a had a child. So I just assumed, you know, that that was natural. I had a lot of postpartum depression, so I spent a lot of time on the sofa crying. <laughs> and even laying on the sofa crying, it would start. Cool. And so it was even harder because it was like, I'm I'm not turned on. I'm not in the mood. I don't I for the first time in a long time I don't want to have sex right now. Why is this still going on? While for the other girls persistent sexual arousal syndrome was linked to the first twinges of pregnancy, for Jeannie it coincided with the onset of menopause. I started spotting rather than having regular menses, so I thought, well, maybe I'm um starting menopause and maybe it's related to something with the hormones although anything I had read about menopause um, women lose their sex drive and I thought well that would be just like me to be the one oddball and go the other way and start to have an increase There are only 40 known cases of persistent sexual arousal syndrome in the world, and no one knows if it's hormonal, neurological, or related to abnormal blood flow. Usually, orgasm involves build-up and release, desire, arousal, increased blood flow, and orgasm. In persistent sexual arousal syndrome, it's off the scales. It's all tension and little, if any, release. The sexual organs are constantly crammed with blood, ready for action, no matter what your state of mind. But the cause is unknown. All three women saw an assortment of doctors for help, but even they were in the dark. To date, I've seen probably seven or eight different gynecologists, an internist, a urologist, a neurologist, a neurourologist, a psychologist, a behavioral psychologist, a psychiatrist. None of them had heard of this condition. None of them knew the cause. None of them had any idea how to treat it except the urologist. So I sent her an email. Wow, what a shock, because she said, yes, we have treated a couple of women with this, and it's called persistent sexual arousal syndrome. The day that I found out that it had a name, that that one day was like, other than the birth of my children and getting married, one of my top five, just finding out it had a name. My husband and son went to get their hair cut at the barber, and while they were sitting there in the waiting room, my husband glances down at the table and sees that there's a magazine open, and it's the Boston Globe, and it's an article about persistent sexual arousal. I got to read the Boston Globe article for myself and, and I just started weeping because here was exactly my problem. You know, women describing what I had been through for nine years and here I thought I was all alone. 
somebody finally validated that I wasn't the only one on the face of the planet with this problem, which is how I felt for that entire six years, especially when you can't find anyone else who has it. You can't find all those doctors. No one had heard of it. You really feel like a freak. The remarkable discovery that this freakish condition had a name spurred Jeannie on to set up the first ever persistent sexual arousal syndrome support group on the internet. What, what are you doing, Jeannie? I'm checking the message board for the support group I started for women with persistent sexual arousal syndrome. Are these women all over the world or just in the United States? Oh, no, they're all over the world. They're, uh, from, there's one on here that lives in Hong Kong. There's one in Australia. There's a couple in the UK. And so far, the rest are here in the States. 58 and rising. What was thought to be as rare as hen's teeth has turned out to be much bigger. I think there's probably a lot more women out there than anyone could imagine. They're too ashamed, too embarrassed, think they're the only ones. I mean, there's been someone that's joined the board that says, I've had this 15 years and I thought I was the only one. Oh, and I know that feeling so well. Naming things helps to give you a sense of control over them. It's kick-started Jeannie into a program of change. The weight and the persistent sexual arousal syndrome have both got to come under her thumb. The hips have got to go, the spare tire's got to go, and the PSAS has really got to go. Well, I'm pushing 50 pounds now over the last uh, eight and a half years since it started. That's a lot of weight to carry. So. I've decided uh, to try to make this the year of nothing but positive things for health. No smoking, uh, start getting in shape, lose the weight, uh, and find some kind of positive good treatment for PSAS and get my life back. I'm just trying to take control, that's all. To get control, Jeannie will do anything, no matter how off the wall. She's tracked down an alternative therapist and arranged for her to come to her house. Here's Dr. London, who thinks she might have a cure. Hi. Oh, hi there. Come on in. How are you? Fine, thank nice you. Nice to meet you in person. Hi, you too. How are you doing today? Oh, been looking forward to this. Hey. I have. Good. Yeah. Good. Let's get going, shall okay. we? Okay. All right, good. Will this box of tricks be the answer to Jeannie's prayers? The perfect sausages are a splash of Liam Perrins. Mmm. Fangers and splash. I'm sorry, Susan. I, I, I just can't do this anymore. HP, proper British. Proper gravy needs a glug of Liam Perrins. Mmm. I wish I always worried a little less and eaten a little more. When I was younger, I wish I'd drunk more beer. <laughs> and I wish I'd got more grass stains. Girls, you are never too old. Grass stains, you hussy. <laughs> now available, new Lurpak spreadable and salted. Fancy some Wall's micro sausages. Wall's. All right. Great. It's a good job it only takes ah, sixty seconds. Come on, ah. Forty seconds. Ah. <laughs> Oh, I'll call you. 
Walls Micro